if rival manufacturers can't bring out cars right with this kind of range within a within the next couple of years, they simply won't have the demand for their vehicles for their products. Now there are various manufacturers testing solid state batteries at this point in time, but none of those batteries are capable of anywhere near this kind of range. If Huawei does have a solid state battery or access to a solid state battery that other car manufacturers don't have access to. And it can provide even 2,000 kilometers of range, so even more than, say, 1,300 miles, that's a game changer. And that is, that is the end of internal combustion because that battery, what they'll do is mass manufacture that battery. They'll start making them. Demand will be so big, they'll have to build a bigger factory and then more, another factory and then another factory and then another factory. And all of a sudden, within the space of a few years, you'll be looking at electric cars with a range of over 1,000 miles, over, over 1,600 kilometers that will become common. So this is not the other car company working on solid state batteries in EVs, but it's the only one we've seen with anywhere near this kind of range. The energy density must be insane. The patent outlines a solid state battery architecture with an energy density of 500 watt hours per kilogram. That's about double the energy density in today's traditional lithium NMC, higher energy density NMC battery. So the, the battery cells you're seeing in say Tesla vehicles, not the standard range models, say the Tesla Model Y long range, it's about double the energy density in those batteries. Could that give you 3,000 kilometers of range? I'm going to guess probably not, but maybe this patent is to say, well, we're at 500 watt hours per kilogram now. In a few years, we'll be at 700. That is certainly possible. That's what many experts think will happen. The filing details a novel approach to improving electrochemical stability doping sulfide electrolytes with nitrogen to address side reactions at the lithium interface, in other words, excessive battery degradation, a long-standing obstacle to the commercialization of sulfide-based batteries. Huawei's design aims to boost safety and cycle life by mitigating this degradation at this junction. In other words, the biggest bottleneck for solid-state batteries is it's actually really not the energy density necessarily, it's the battery degradation. Solid state batteries degrade faster, much, much faster than traditional batteries. So Huawei are basically saying, we fix that. And if that, if, if that is actually accurate, and if they can mass manufacture these batteries, then, uh, well, China is further ahead than what we thought they were. That's pretty scary. Huawei's involvement in solid state battery research reflects really, and in the involvement of not just one company, but there's actually numerous Chinese and American battery companies working on solid state batteries and South Korean, I should mention as well. Huawei does not manufacture batteries, I should point that out, but it has shown increasing interest in battery materials. Earlier in 2025, the company filed a separate patent on the synthesis of sulfide electrolytes, a key material known for its high conductivity, but also high cost, sometimes exceeding the price of gold. And if that's the case, I mean, if they're that expensive, then that's gonna be a big challenge. But remember, when there is demand for a certain material, companies will go and search for that material. And they'll find more of it and the price will eventually come down. That's what could happen. Now, what I see happening is I don't think these EVs, with Huawei putting a patent for this battery, I don't think EVs that they're putting this battery in will be capable of this kind of range. I think they'll probably make the battery smaller. Ultimately, you don't need any more than, say, 700 kilometers of range. Really, you don't need more than 500 miles or 450 miles of range. Will there be a use case? Yeah, but not many. Most people don't need that. So they'll, what they'll do is they'll put smaller batteries into cars, and that'll make those electric cars lighter. And what will happen is you're going to see electric cars will be lighter than internal combustion, they're already much more efficient. They'll also be lighter and be capable of charging in five minutes. Now, we know that BYD's batteries are capable of charging in five minutes as well. Of course, Zika and Geely, they've been, they have actually battery technology now that can charge in seven or eight minutes. So this is becoming pretty widespread in the Chinese automotive industry. Recently, Xiaomi filed a patent for a com composite electrode structure to optimize ion transport. Basically, Xiaomi also filed a patent for solid state battery technology as well. Chinese firms are really putting huge resources into solid state batteries. They know that they have to because this is where everything's going. 
Huawei's claims of a 3,000 kilometer range, uh, that's a bit wild, I think. But five minute charging as well, it's generated a huge amount of attention in China. Everyone is talking about it. And experts warn that these figures are theoretical and require charging infrastructure that is not yet commercially available. But the question is, could these EVs using this technology, for, for example, use uh, Zika and Xpeng's 500 kilowatt chargers? Yeah, they could. And they're, they're, they're being installed outside of China. They're being installed in Australia and Europe in other countries. Could they also use BYD's 1,000 kilowatt charging? Potentially as well. So this is probably going to happen faster than what people actually realize. Japanese and South Korean media, um, they are very apparently very concerned, and the United States, very concerned that China is just too far ahead and they can never catch up. And what that means is China will dominate the automotive industry and just take more and more market share every year. Traditional leaders like Toyota, Panasonic, and Samsung have invested in solid state batteries and they've been working on them for now probably about 13 or 14 years. But as you can see, only one of those three companies, Toyota, Panasonic, and Samsung, only one of them actually has a solid state battery in a car today. You can't buy EVs with Samsung's solid state batteries, but there are a couple of, I believe there's two different car manufacturers using those solid state batteries from Samsung in their cars right now, testing them, driving them, giving them long range testing, driving them over and over and over every day to see how long these batteries will last for, to see if they actually can do the job over a long period of time. Toyota actually unveiled a prototype, well, it said it did, back in 2014. It claimed that in 2021, all of its electric cars, all of them, every single model, would use a solid state battery. After much blustering, a whole lot of talk, and really no action and no real results and nothing to show for it, Toyota actually in 2023 unveiled a prototype solid state battery saying it would enable 1,200 kilometer range and a 10 minute charge time. And it would be commercialized within five years. So that means that Toyota is saying it's going to happen. Toyota's electric cars will have their own proprietary solid state batteries before 2028. And they're saying they'll be mass manufacturing them by 2030. If you believe that, you'd have to ignore Toyota's past history of not delivering what they say they will when it comes to solid state batteries. But you never know. It's certainly possible. It could happen. Chinese entities now file 7,600 solid state batteries patents every single year. That is wild. However, probably the company that I think is most likely to dominate the sector is the current largest battery company in the world, CATL. CATL aims to begin pilot production of a hybrid solid state battery in 2027. And, and really, CATL, they are the most likely company to deliver. However, high techs, going high techs, Jinshi battery in China has 350 watt hours per kilogram of energy density and volumetric density is 800 watt hours per liter. That's pretty high. Apparently, that has already entered production in China. Beijing's Wei Lion has begun manufacturing a 50 amp hour all solid state cell with national certification. But of course, that's only used for smaller devices. There's quite a lot of hurdles though still. And the biggest issue is, like I said before, the batteries, they degrade faster. That's the biggest challenge that all these manufacturers are working on. In addition to that, high production costs, currently between what Car News China says, 1,100 to 1,400 US dollars per kilowatt hour, which is far, far higher. Give you some context, 1,100 to 1,400 US dollars per kilowatt hour, compare that to lithium ion phosphate, which is at about $50 per kilowatt hour. I mean, you're literally talking about batteries, about batteries that are about 20, 20 to 25 times the cost. That's the other bottleneck here. That's why I've said many times on the channel that you're going to see supercars, right? You're going to see these um, really expensive supercars, expensive premium vehicles, potentially luxury cars, getting these batteries first, simply because they're so expensive at this point to manufacture. That will change. That will change in the future. But that's what's going to happen for the first few years. Huawei, I mean, is this legit? Are they blustering? Is this patent true? Is it accurate? I mean, as far as we know, they don't even make batteries. Well, maybe that's changed. Maybe they do. I mean, Huawei, they've got their fingers in a lot of pies. They've got a lot of money behind them. 
So I'd say it's worth taking this seriously, but not to the point of saying, well, Huawei, let's buy their stock because I don't think there's enough evidence yet that these batteries will be mass produced within the next five years. But I can tell you now, there's a lot of excitement in the sector. There's billions of dollars going into investment into solid state batteries. Pretty much everyone is saying this is where the market for high energy density, long range EVs will be within five years time. 